happen as I am alive. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are real. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor age.
It's clear that both she and her older sister Joyce were born with a cannabis. Her mom would always take the pencil from the daylight and to the place in the right. The work that she did was proper to her work and the household tasks were often completed with the left. Education was at St. Mark's Primary School and then later the Arlington School. On leaving secondary school, she was sent to learn shorthand and typing as well as needlework, a skill that was a great asset to her later in life in the city. Her studies in the city resulted in her spending most of her time in Dash Valley, St. George, with her aunt, Jessie, whom she described as a very strict disciplinarian, but would always make sure you do not only have something to eat, but on leaving, you took home a full basket. When there was a shortage of nurses in England, her younger sister, Ava, known as Pat, was one of the set of young Barbadian girls to heed the call. Jean had no desire to go, but later changed her mind when Pat approached the matron of her hospital and wholly recommended her. She was later told that the matron wrote to the Barbados government requesting for her to be sent up as soon as possible with the best available treatment. She often said she had a great life in England. It was also much to her surprise that she enjoyed her nursing studies. She made lots of friends from different cultures and even spent most of her free time on vacation in the English countryside, as well as visiting Spain and France. To her English colleague, she was noted for her fashion. She was grateful for her needlework skills. She acquired, for not only she made her own clothes, but knitted and crocheted coats, hats, and socks for herself and others. On many occasions, when there was a dance, she would be approached to borrow an article of clothing. In return, one colleague taught her the application of makeup. On her return to Barbados as a registered nurse, her career included working as a district nurse in St. John and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. However, she enjoyed and spent many years working with the elderly at a geriatric hospital. Jean credited her accomplishments to God. She often said that without him, she never would have made it. She often reminded her daughter, granddaughter, and great-grandson to put God first in everything they wanted to achieve with the faith that it can be done. In fact, within her purse, she carried a coin with the slogan, with God, all things are possible. She constantly reminded her children to always pray and never go to bed without doing so. Many nights when everyone had gone to bed, her light would be on and she was often seen praying. Whenever her daughter and granddaughter were leaving home, she would always say, May God go with you. It became a routine that they felt blessed and protected. In later years, after retirement, her hobbies include Bible study, gardening, and word puzzles. When her sister Pat had temporarily located to Barbados, they would always travel to the city and go on bus rides. Her fondest memory was their staycation at a South Coast hotel. As her health deteriorated, she could be found sitting in her favorite chair, chatting on the phone with family and friends, watching TV, as well as listening to the daily events of her children's lives, giving the necessary advice. For indeed, she was considered the matriarch of the household. Jean Ophelia Coddington Savage, may you rest in God's eternal peace and raise in his wondrous glory. Thank you. The opening hymn, Lead Us Heavenly Father, Lead Us.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Jean Ophelia. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first Bible reading, followed by the psalm. Blessed morning to all. The first Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 57. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the death of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the first reading. Thank you.
daily child every morning, nor praying, nor seeing any words. But the problem with things is not that serious. And he was inside the tongue of the children. Before, I made all things new. Also, he said, Great is, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha, Alpha, and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the fountain of the water of life of the He who conquers shall have his heritage, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The word of the Lord. Him before the address, him 474, you know, the third from the province of the West Indies, you know, Rock of Ages, Clef, for him. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. In a little while, as we commit our sister Jean Ophelia, my Auntie Jean, as we commit her body into the ground, we shall do so while singing her favorite hymn and one of the great hymns of our faith. When peace like a river, it is well with my soul. It is a hymn of confidence, assurance, victory, and peace. The story behind this great hymn is probably one of the most well-known. It tells of the author Horatius Spafford, a wealthy Chicago lawyer, 
with a thriving law practice, a beautiful home, wife, four daughters, and a son, a devout Christian whose circle of friends included the highly acclaimed American evangelists and the preachers, Dwight L. Moody, Ira Sankey, and various other well-known Christians of the day. At the very height of his financial and professional success, Horatio and his wife, Anna, suffered the tragic loss of their young son. And shortly thereafter, on October 8, 1871, the Great Chicago Fire destroyed almost every real estate investment that Spafford had. And so two years later, Spafford scheduled a boat trip to Europe in order to give his wife and daughters a much needed vacation and time to recover from the tragedy. While he himself went to join preachers Moody and Sankey on an evangelistic campaign in England. Spafford sent his wife and daughters ahead of him while he remained in Chicago to take care of some unexpected last minute business. Several days later, he received news that his family ship had encountered a collision. All four of his daughters drowned. Only his wife survived. With a heavy heart, Spafford boarded a boat that would take him to his grieving wife, Anna, in England. And it was on this trip that he penned those now famous words. When sorrow like sea billows roll, it is well, it is well with my soul. All of us, without exception, have experienced what may be described as the unfairnesses of life. And times when sorrow, like sea billows, roll. This morning is one of those times, certainly for me and for my family. But what enables the author of this great hymn, Horatia Spafford, to say after such tragic losses of finances of his dear children, what enables Spafford to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is the same thing that we hold on to this morning. Our faith and trust in God and the fact that God is with us just as he promised in good times, and in bad times. Even if we don't feel like it, even if it doesn't look like it, God has promised. And the God that we serve is a promise-keeping God. If God says it, he's going to do it. For God has promised he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we learn in difficult times, perhaps, more in difficult times than at any other times, such as these, times such as these, that God, God draws near to us. He draws close to us. And it is this closeness that we experience, the peace which the Apostle Paul wrote about in the book of Philippians, the peace which surpasses all understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Having God with us, knowing that God is faithful, that God is good, that he is compassionate and he is loving toward all that he has made, that Jesus has given us this promise and in him we have the promise of eternal life, abundant life quality life, life everlasting, and that uh, this he has promised in a home which he has gone to prepare for us where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more funerals, amen to that, 
it will be a time in which we will all be bowing down before him and singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty it is it is these are the promises that help us to get through times such as these in our lives having that close relationship with god enables us to be content not giddy-headed happy and it, it, because we are here and auntie jean is no longer with us but we can be content even at times of death and funeral services and we can rejoice in the knowledge of what the promises are to us and this is what gives us peace peace like a river and it is this that makes our souls well earlier i told you that the story behind this great hymn is probably one of the most well known but what is probably not well known is the story behind the person who wrote the music to the hymn philip bliss composer of many songs one another familiar one that you know hold the fort hold the fort for i am coming jesus signal still oh wave the answer back to heaven by god's grace we will you know that one but you may not necessarily know jesus loves even me oh you know that praise god philip bliss wrote the music to the hymn it is well with my soul listen to his story on the 29th december 1876 while on his way to chicago to sing the hymn it is well with my soul at a church service the train in which bliss and his wife were traveling plunged over a cliff into a ravine and claimed the lives of both bliss and his wife he was only 38 years old but in his suitcase the words to the last hymn he wrote were found the words to the song my redeemer both horatio spafford the author of it is well with my soul and philip bliss who wrote the music to the hymn understood that it was because of the cross that they had eternal life and as a result, they could sing the praises of God. This same gift, the gift of eternal life, is available to us as well. And for more than a century, the tragic story of one man has given hope to countless thousands who have lifted their voices to sing this beautiful hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. It is my prayer that as we have gathered here this morning to give God thanks and praise for the life and witness of Auntie Jean, whom we shall miss, that in addition to God's word to us, that once again, this song will do for us what it has done for countless others. It will comfort our grieving hearts and remind us of God's undying love and care for us. So this is why I believe, I did not speak to IC2 in relation to why this hymn might have been Auntie Jean's favorite hymn, but I believe that this is why Auntie Jean loved this hymn, because she believed in the one who died for her. And we heard it shared in the eulogy. She carried a coin with her that spoke to that. And so she determined that through all the changing scenes in life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of her God shall still her heart and the tongue employ. For Auntie Jean was that, if nothing else, a quiet, strong, determined woman who the years overseas and working as a nurse knew that it was only by God's grace and mercy that she was able to make it through all of life's changing circumstances. 
And I can still see her in my mind's eye, walking along Bay Street at the end of her shift, back straight, eyes looking resolutely ahead as she made her way back home, having done her duty to God and her fellow man in her care of her patients. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. So I hope that once the weather holds up, and when we come to sing this great hymn in a little while, Auntie Jean's favorite, I hope that we will sing it. Those of us who are able to make it across to the burial ground, I hope that we will sing it in the conviction and blessed assurance in which it was written. For when peace, like a river, attendeth our way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever our lot, thou hast taught us to say, it is well, it is well with our souls. I see too, I show her, Rishon, Aidan, we know that you will miss her, for yours was a really tightly knit family. But knowing that she had a long, well-lived, well-loved, well-cared-for life, I believe that will help. And of course, you still have us, <laughs> your family, your friends, your colleagues here from Baiko who've come and to share and be present here with you, all of us who are physically present, and of course, our cousins who are online. Gail and Giselle and Graham and their families and Auntie Grace, all of them are, they're watching online. And they're joining and they've gathered with us here as we are physically here, they've gathered online to join in support of you. So know that you are in our hearts and you are in our prayers. And we pray that the God of all comfort will comfort you, will comfort us, and he will give you the strength that you will need in the days ahead. I am happy that we are able to have this service here in this, our family church. Because truly that is what this church is for the Codringtons. It is our family church. And so I give God thanks and praise for the life and witness of our sister Jean Ophelia, my Aunt Jean, and I pray that Almighty God will continue to be with us. He will strengthen us in the days ahead and that we will hold fast to that faith that she lived and died in. So let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your booklet, the creed of our baptism and the creed in which Auntie Jean lived and in which she died. Let us now stand. I believe in God.
Lord, console Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for our Jean and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister Jane was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. During the singing of this hymn, a collection will be taken for the ministry of the church. The hymn, Jerusalem, my happy home. standing for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and the maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sight, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy.
Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend our sister, Jean Ophelia, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, Jean, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jean. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Our final hymn to God be the glory. Great things he has done.
Non Demetis. Trampling down death by death and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Auntie Jean, into paradise, may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you to the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen.
the Lord be with you. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Jean Ophelia, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister Jean, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved, the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace, now and forevermore. Amen.
For him, amazing grace.
there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. The hymn, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my love, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. This is Auntie Jean's favorite hymn. Let us sing it in the blessed assurance in which she lived and died, even as we bless God for his showers of blessings.
should buffet. Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. Powerful, powerful words. For it is only in the experience of death and loss that we really truly experience all of what is available to us because we can give God thanks and praise when all is going well but it is at the end of losses, tragedies if we can still say that it is well oh bless God bless God indeed feel like another sermon <laughs> the psalmist says he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. 
He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, you shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, were without end. Amen. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended.
Yes. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together, let us say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes. My sympathy. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Here, I think come in here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.